Hi everyone, uh, Katie from the Museum of Ontario Archaeology um, here again this afternoon. Um, today we're going to talk about um, something called seriation, um, which is a dating technique for archaeological artifacts and uh, archaeological sites. Uh, Heather mentioned uh, a little bit about seriation and some uh, relative dating methods yeah, uh, yesterday in her What is Archaeology talk, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on it today. Um, so before we get started, I'm going to define just briefly the difference between relative and absolute dating. Relative is a dating method that is not precise. Uh, you can get a general sense of a date that could be a year, well, a year would be absolute, <laughs> pretty close. Uh, that could be a decade, it could be a century, it could be a millennium. Um, it can be, basically, it's going to narrow down the time frame that we're looking at. Um, an absolute date is a lot more precise. It's generally a specific year. So um, a coin with a date stamped in it for its manufacture is an absolute date. A date that is stamped 1901 was made in 1901. And if it ends up in the ground, we know because we that the coin was made in 1901. And so it couldn't be buried in 1899, for example. So it creates a very finite um, latest date that that could possibly be. Um, and relative dating is much more broad. So relative dating is essentially, it's very mathematical, and I'm not going to talk too much today about the math within uh, seriation because I don't quite understand it. I'm not a mathematician, um, but it utilizes mathematical patterns and puts the, it allows tracking of these patterns so that we can put different stylistic components within uh, different artifacts into a sequence, um, a typological sequence is what it's called. And that sounds a little bit um, confusing perhaps, and it uh, is a little bit confusing when we start talking about the pottery and about arrowheads or projectile points or other types of artifacts that we can use this type of dating with, but we actually do this every day in our own lives based on the knowledge that we have in our own minds, from our own experiences, for the things that are around us. Um, a really good example is clothing styles. So we see big, wide bell-bottom pants in a photograph and we can immediately identify based on general knowledge of fashion throughout the 20th century that that's probably a picture taken in the 1970s because those specific or that specific type of clothing that's when we would see it most um, it can resurge and it, they did a little bit in the so what is that late night 1990s early 2000s um, but we can see that difference within other elements of the photograph as well so you're you're not going to mix mistake that necessarily um, another good example is cars, and I have some examples for you here. I usually use cars um, when I teach uh, younger children about how this works um, because they don't necessarily have the knowledge of clothes that um, we might think they do. But here's a good example. Model T Ford versus... Um, a Chevy Bel Air. So 1955, 1910. And you can probably tell without me having to tell you which of these two cars is older than the other. Um, I have a little activity, looks kind of like this, that I um, have posted up on our kids resources. I put a little section at the bottom because we don't normally have resources for these talks. So um, I've added them to the bottom of that just so they are accessible there. And I will attach the link to this, um, to this talk specifically um, at the bottom or to this talk um, when it's posted um, afterwards. And uh, you may have 
Is that whole thing? I can't see anybody talking. So if anybody's talking, um, I apologize. I'm not seeing you quite yet. But um, is it going to want me to do that? I don't know. That's okay. Um, so this activity is essentially similar to the cars one. There are 10 cars from uh, 1915 through to 2006, I believe. And your job is to put them in order. Use just your knowledge and see how good you do. Um, see how well you do. Um, there is also an answer sheet to, uh, to help you along. And you can cut those out and you can put them into order um, that way or you can just write on them. Um, whatever you would like to do, but I encourage you, it's fun, um, to sort of test your hand at how that works. So archeologists, we apply that same principle to archeological artifacts. Um, and what we're really looking for is we're looking for those cultural styles, which um, they tend to go in bell curves. So they start out, then they become very popular, and then they start to drop off a little bit. Um, and we can start to see um, by looking at a variety of sites and using different dating techniques. So things like carbon 14 dating, um, absolute dating methods such as dates, coins, and, and other uh, things that can do that. Um, so we can get that typological sequence sort of really solidified out in a fairly accurate and hopefully accurate sequence um, that we can then take individual artifacts from different sites and uh, compare them to. So we find an artifact, we look at it, and we compare it to the known sequence and we can get a date for it by by that um, this my or one of my interests within archaeology is the history of archaeology so I thought I would add in um, to this talk a little bit a little bit about um, the history of uh, seriation um, and it's one of the older methods of uh, dating or methodological archaeology in and of itself and it was uh, begun by a man named Flinders Petrie who's a, an English archaeologist an, an English Egyptologist uh, working in a site in Egypt called Diospolis, Diospolis Parva um, and he that site is a grave site or a series of graves that he had at that point in time which was in the late 19th century um, I tried to search for the date and I'm not sure when he was excavating on that specific site, but it was definitely in the late 19th century. And he had these series of graves that he, at that time had no other methods for dating them and putting them into order, putting them into sequence. Um, and he noticed that the pottery that was within those graves varied. And so he started to look at the, this, this, these bell curves of, um, popularity of these different styles and developed a method very method a lot very math very mathematical um of how to put those into a sequence um and which is what we're interested in archaeologists are interested in time and we're interested in how uh time has passed on the archaeological site that we were looking at um sometimes archaeological sites are single habitations they can last for a short time a slightly longer time or there can be multiple habitations on a site that take place over many hundreds even thousands of years and um, using the styles of pottery and of projectile points and of any other type of artifact that has culturally specific uh, styles that can change um, as opposed to functional uh, then we can apply this method of seriation to the pot or to these artifacts and begin to develop a timeline of when things happened and how long. Um, so if, um, if anybody has any questions about seriation and how it works, um, please let us know by commenting on this video and we will answer you. And if you are interested, go and check out the activity that I've made up for you and have some fun. So thank you uh, once again for joining us. Uh, and I will um, talk to you later on this week. Bye-bye.